Hello and welcome back to the Good 5 Cent Cigar Newscast. My name is Alexa Patamianos. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up, a look into another classic Rhode Island landmark, a farewell to some of our cigar seniors, and as always, stay tuned for your Rhodey Sports Corner. This week, the cigar's own Aiden Cahill took a trip to the Rhode Island desert located in West Greenwich. Find out more about what the park has to offer in the second edition of Aiden on Location. With how cold and rainy the ocean state can sometimes be, you may be surprised to find out that Rhode Island has a desert. Welcome to Aiden on Location at the Rhode Island Desert in the Big River Management Area in West Greenwich, Rhode Island. While it may not be an actual desert, the so-called Rhode Island Desert was formed during the last ice age while the glaciers receded, dropping all sorts of sediment and sand all around the area. The receding glaciers also left behind a completely alien landscape. Out here feels otherworldly. Less than half a mile away that way is Interstate 95, and you can hear it loud in the distance, but it feels completely desolate and lifeless out here. Just the sand, some brown grass, and these hills. It really does feel completely alien in the patch of dunes. There's just nothing quite else like it around. And as for those hills, would you really be that surprised if I told you that this is a popular sledding spot once the snow starts falling? After all, some of these dunes are incredibly tall and steep. This one is about 40 feet tall, actually. And as you can see, it requires a pretty hefty amount of energy to work your way up the top. So imagine how fast you can get going down this in the snow. The dunes are a popular off-roading spot within the state, especially given how empty they feel. It's almost like a massive sand playground for anyone with an off-road vehicle wanting to take it out. According to the USGS, plans have existed since at least the 1960s to turn some of this area into a reservoir fed by the Big River. However, as of last year, those plans seem to have been cancelled permanently. While this may feel like a desert per se, we are still surrounded by the woods. And this area being public land means it's open for hunting. So if you're a season round explorer like myself and come out during the winter, be sure to wear orange reflective gear like this, and a lot of it per state requirements. While it may not be a proper desert, the Rhode Island desert is still a unique spot that feels entirely foreign to the evergreen forests surrounding it. If you're looking for a local adventure that truly feels remarkable, why not dig yourself in at the dunes? As the fall semester comes to a close, some of our cigar seniors take a moment to reflect on their time with the paper and share more about their next steps. Sounds right. I joined the cigar my first year at URI because I honestly didn't really want to join at first, but I thought that I wanted to be a video journalist at that point so I joined because I heard that they had a newscast um, and then at my first meeting I got really intimidated and figured I should pick up a story even though I knew nothing about writing and now the rest is kind of history. I did the school newspaper uh, in high school and I wanted a way to get more involved my first year here. It was uh, peak COVID time, so there was not much going on, but I found out that the cigar was meeting. Uh, joined some Zoom meetings my first year and kind of went from there. I joined the cigar my sophomore year to get some more camera experience upon being a cigar. I haven't gotten much camera experience, but I have gotten a lot of experience with journalism and film in general. I'm 
Well, so I've known Alexa and Juliana since freshman year. We're like this. And they needed a business manager to fill the business manager position. And they hit me up. And I was like, sure, I'll do it. So then um, that's what happened. My favorite part of the cigar. Hmm. I really like the people. I like the atmosphere. I feel like it's a different zone of campus than I'm usually around, and I feel like it makes the campus feel smaller for me. Like, I know more people. I know, yeah. My favorite part of the cigar is definitely the people. I think I've only stuck with it this long because I've met so many incredible people. I've met a bunch of my best friends, and by interviewing different people, I've gained so many connections that I would not have gotten otherwise. There's so many amazing parts of the cigar. Um, first off, I'm always, I'm always so proud of all the work that we do. Um, every week, all the reporting that we do, the photos that we take, the editing that our wonderful eboard does, um, and, you know, going through the entire process of organizing a paper and, you know, going through all of that is something I'm really proud of. and. Being able to be a part of that for the past, uh, you know, three years has been just so incredible. My favorite part of the cigar is definitely the friendships that I've made and the different things that I've gotten to do with it. And I was able to go to California because of the cigar and I've just had a lot of super cool experiences and made my best friends. Uh, don't be afraid to take risks. Uh, put yourself out there, get involved. Um, you know, you don't really get anywhere in life if you don't take a few risks here and there. So do that and see where, see where life takes you. Um, get involved. Uh, try and tackle your insecurities because they're only going to hold you back. Like, don't be afraid to try new things because you think it looks weird or because you think that you're not going to be interested in it. Like, people are always saying that experience is what lets you know, like, what you like and what you don't like and who you want to be. So just um, be open to new experiences. I would say to definitely get as involved as possible and to push yourself out of your comfort zone because that's how you grow the most. Uh, absolutely to get involved in anything you can, even if it just slightly interests you. You never know who you're going to meet or where you're going to find your home here. I'm currently applying to graduate school for higher education, um, so I'm in the middle of that process and hopefully I will be attending grad school in the fall. After graduation, I'm looking for a job in the journalism industry. Wherever that takes me, uh, I guess I'll find out. Um, but I want to stay relatively local to either Boston or Providence, um, but we'll travel wherever else around New England. Um, I really want to just keep telling stories um, and getting to know people around the area. I don't have any set plans yet, but I'm hoping to stay in Rhode Island if I get a job out here and I would like to um, go into like producing and that side of news rather than being on camera. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be a business tycoon. Here is your week at URI. With finals week just around the corner, the Office of Student Involvement is hosting Unwind Your Mind Week. Check out the URI SEA Instagram to see all of the events being offered. On Wednesday, December 6th, the URI Graduate School of Oceanography hosted their annual winter market at the Bay Campus. On Thursday, December 7th, the Honors College is showing Home Alone in Lippitt Hall. They will also be serving hot cocoa and popcorn. And now over to Nathan Robillard with your Roadie Sports Corner. Hello and welcome to this semester's final edition of Roadie Sports Corner, the number one place for weekly updates on all things Roadie Athletics. I'm Nathan Robillard. It was a busy week for both basketball programs this week. It all started when URI men's basketball took to Friartown over the weekend in their annual in-state rivalry game versus Providence College on Saturday. For more on the game, here's Brandon LaJoy. <laughs> The Rams were met with a chorus of boos from a sold-out Amica Mutual Pavilion on Saturday night ahead of another clash of the historic Ocean State rivalry. 
and despite the final score, the Rams and Friars went back and forth throughout the night. The Rams took a trip up I-95 tonight to take on the Providence College Friars for the 133rd time between the two schools, where we saw the Providence Friars defeat the Rams 84-69. to Coming into the game, a key for a Ram win was shutting down a familiar face in George Mason transfer Josh Odoro. Tyson Brown and David Fuchs, in a collective effort, held Odoro to just 10 points on 3 of 9 from the field. Brown tallied three steals on the night, and Fuchs also showed up on offense with 11 points. We look much different than we did two weeks ago. So there's progress there. And uh, if we can bottle that 30 and continue to clean up some things offensively and continue to kind of just keep working towards bringing that type of energy level, we have a chance to be a really good team. The Rams began the second half tying it with the Zeke Montgomery three, but there was no stopping Bryce Hopkins, who finished the night with 24 points. I thought Bryce really came on in the second half. Uh, the physicality, you could tell. Uh, the experience level, he continues to stay with it. Bryce is great. Um, once he get to his spots, get where he wants to go, the better control, it's hard to time he can take. I think his patience at the end of drives has been better. The Rams seem to have started to mount a comeback in the second half, but they simply ran out of gas. And on a brighter note, four Rams finished with double-digit points. Jaden House with a team-high 18, Zeke Montgomery with 10 points, and Louis Court right along with David Fuchs finishing off with 11. Reporting live from inside the Amica Mutual Pavilion, I'm Brandon LaJoy. URI women's basketball were also in action this week, falling at the buzzer versus Quinnipiac on Thursday, before responding just three days later with their first rank win in program history. Michael Petrasky and Ryan Palillo have you covered. I'm here outside the Ryan Center where the Rams just took on Quinnipiac. They were looking for their third straight victory following a sweep at the Las Vegas Holiday Classic. The Rams started off the scoring with this jumper made by Taisha Hyman. Then Sophie Phillips forced the turnover on the inbound and got the steal before passing it to Maya Torre for the easy bucket to put the Rams up 4-0 to start the game. Sophie Phillips then forced another turnover early by poking the ball away from Quinnipiac's Maria Keeley. The start of this game was a defensive masterclass for both sides, as Maria Keeley got her revenge as she stole the ball from Sophie Phillips, leading Quinnipiac down the court for this bucket made by Anna Foley. Anna scored the first four points for Quinnipiac, tying the game early with this long range too. This foul by Tenen Magasa, leading to two made free throws by Anna Foley, kicked off a 10-0 run by Quinnipiac to give them a six-point lead going into the half. Coach Tammy Reese had this to say about her team's struggle during that run. Ready to compete. And it's the one thing I'm disappointed in our team is we, we have a sense of entitlement a little bit right now. Um, we're not ready to play and we're not ready to compete. And, you know, that falls on me. Um, so, you know, it's trying to get them on the same page right now. But all the credit goes to Quinnipiac. I thought they outplayed us from start to finish. Following a strong third quarter where the Rams regained the lead, Sophie Phillips made the Rams first and only three of the game to help extend their lead. With just under a minute left in the game, the Rams led by one when Tenna Magasa made a crucial block only for Quinnipiac to get the ball back and hit this clutch three. It was a back and forth the rest of the game as Tenen made the bucket and drew the foul for the and one to put the Rams back in the lead. Then Quinnipiac came down the court and scored on a layup to take back the lead with 30 seconds left. Down one, the Rams put the ball in the hands of Maya Torre to help them regain the lead. Drawing the foul, Maya was sent to the free throw line, making one out of her two free throws to tie the game at 59 with 20 seconds left. Then the unthinkable happened for the Rams, as what looked like a game-clinching steal and a nail-biting victory for them turned into this shot leading to crushing defeat. Following a heartbreaking loss, the Rams now host number 25 ranked Princeton on Sunday. At the Ryan Center, I'm Michael Petrasky. Ryan Palillo took to the Ryan Center to watch the Rams take on number 25 Princeton Tigers just three days later. It's upset season here in Rhode Island as the URI women's basketball team just took down the number 25 ranked Princeton with a score of 60 to 58. Rhode Island entered the match 5-3 coming off an upset loss of their own. 
The team lacked the basics, according to head coach Tammy Reese, and that's what they went back to. Here's more of what coach had to say about the quick turnaround win. You know, we, we talk about Rocky all the time, and I always tell him it's not how many times you get hit and fall down. It's, it's how many times you just keep coming forward. And when times get the hardest is when we need each other the most. And so to quit, you know, they could have packed it in. We lost to a one and four Quinnipiac team at home. And that's devastating. It is. But the mindset was, again, not the outcome. Whether we lost or won that Quinnipiac game, we had to learn something from that. It was a wild ride in the Ryan Center. The game started off rather slow, with neither team being able to get into a rhythm. The final score after one would be 11 to eight, Brody. The second quarter was a different story, however, as Dee Dee Davis kicked off what would be a career scoring night. She had 14 of URI's 16 in the second quarter alone. Shots like this, were able to help the Rams enter the half up 27-22. Princeton would answer back to Rhodey's dominance in the first half when they tied the game up at 34-34 thanks to this pull-up jumper from Caitlin Chen. Dee Dee Davis continued her night, dropping in this three-pointer and this layup to keep the Rams ahead. The score would sit 39-32 with 5.07 left in the third quarter. The game would remain evenly paced until the fourth quarter. The Tigers would ramp it up offensively, and they started the roll, hitting shots like this Olivia Hutcherson three-pointer. Princeton was on a mission. Eventually, the score would sit at 53-53 with three and a half minutes left. Tisha Hyman would sink a free throw to give the Rams a slight lead. But ranked teams don't quit. Fast forward to the final minute, and the score is 56-56. Tisha Hyman again scores a clutch basket to put the Rams up. The minutes that followed had the Ryan Center feeling a wave of emotions. After Sophie Phillips hit two free throws to go up four, Princeton would answer. But following an offensive foul on the Rams during an inbound, Princeton was given .3 seconds to put up a game-changing shot. And after an official review of this play, the referees decided that this one was over. This upset victory puts URI at 6-3 and three on the season. Their next matchup will be away against Providence College, an in-state rivalry. From the Roadie Sports Corner, I'm Ryan Palillo. Now for a look at your scores around campus this week. URI women's basketball were in action this week, falling at the buzzer versus Quinnipiac on Thursday, before responding just three days later with their first rank win in program history. Both basketball teams concluded their busy stretch with a pair of midweek games against Ocean State opponents. Men's basketball faced off against Brown on Wednesday, while the women's team traveled to Providence. Men's and women's indoor track also opened their 2023 season over the weekend, sending split squads to a pair of meets in Boston and Providence. That's all we have for this week's edition of Roadie Sports Corner. For live updates across all things URI athletics, be sure to follow us on social media at Cigar Sports. Alexa, back to you. That's all we have for you this week at the Five Cent Cigar Newscast. As always, make sure to check us out at RhodeyCigar.com and follow us on social media at Rhodey Cigar. From Kingston, Rhode Island, I'm Alexa Patemianos. Have a happy and safe winter break.